All right, so as you guys know, I'm into I'm into rock music, okay, metal music. A lot of the stuff I like is kind of poser stuff, like it's kind of heavy, but it's it's not that heavy, right? You probably wouldn't give me a lot of credibility for a lot of the music I like in, in terms of like the rock and metal scene, because I like a lot of like pop rock or kind of pop metal stuff. And one artist I like in particular is known as Falling in Reverse. Falling in Reverse is a band that's really just headed by one guy, Ronnie Radke, and the rest of the lineup has pretty much come and gone since 2014 when the band started, but that's not really when Ronnie he started making music because the reason why Falling in Reverse exists is because Ronnie went to jail prior to his inception. Prior to that, he was in a band called Escape the Fate. Now, as far as I know, the reason he went to jail is because of a parole violation, and the reason he had parole in the first place is because he went to an altercation during which his friend was going to get in a fight with someone, and someone ended up being killed at that at that interaction. Right? Ronnie wasn't the one who killed him. Ronnie didn't like hold anyone down. He didn't he didn't you know commit any specific act of violence in that situation. But he was present for some one's death and he was present for a sketchy situation and as a result he went to jail his old band escape the fate basically kicked him out as a result of that then he violates his parole and he goes to jail and i believe he was in jail for two years then he gets out starts falling in reverse now falling in reverse is you know more successful than escape the fate ever was my life is like a video game so if we go to escape the fates page here this is the the old band ronnie was in they ended up getting a new singer from another band we can see they have three million monthly listeners so it's certainly not anything to scoff at like this is an impressive amount of people listening. You can see a bunch of their songs have a ton of plays. Like this one has 100 million plays, their most popular song here. Some of the others have 80. This one has 2 million. This is like a newer song or 1.5 million. This one has 60 million. But you'll notice that a lot of the songs come from one album. This song, Situations with 83 million plays. This song, Not Good Enough for the Truth and Cliche has 60 million. This song, The Webs We Weave has 18 million. This song, My Apocalypse has 20 million. I mean, this is a combined 200 million plays right here. And all of those songs are from their first album, Dying is Your Latest Fashion. You can see very recognizable sort of iconic album cover here and this is the album that ronnie sang on initially for escape the fate you know they were a very popular band at the time i believe they opened for my chemical romance or something like that back in like 2006 or 7 and so they were a very big deal at the time they were a very big myspace band and to this day i mean this album is very iconic and if i had to guess it's probably the most popular album that escape the fate has ever put out i mean if you look at their other their other you know albums some of them have like a hit here or there but i think this is really you know where escape the fate shine and it's because of the presence of Ronnie. Now, by contrast, if you go to Falling in Reverse, this is like a much newer act, obviously. There's Ronnie right there, and he has more than double the amount of listeners. He has 7.4 million listeners monthly, and this is like a huge amount of listeners, by the way. This is like, you know, carving into like Slipknot territory or maybe even like Avenged Sevenfold territory. You can see right here, 9 million listeners for Avenged Sevenfold and seven and a half for Falling in Reverse and growing, you know? I remember when I started listening to Falling in Reverse a few years ago on Spotify, I think he only had like 2 million monthly listeners, which is, you know, still impressive, but obviously he's band has grown a lot. And even with recent songs, this one's called Wash the World Burn. This song came out, I want to say a few months ago. It's got 70 million plays. This is his most popular one. This one's got almost 300 million. I mean, this one's just like a mainstream hit at this point. Here we've got Voices in My Head. This one's got 70 million. Here we've got Zombify. This one's got 76 million. So clearly Ronnie is a very popular dude in the kind of rock, metal, you know, more on the pop side of rock and metal scene, but obviously the most popular stuff is going to be, you know, on that kind of side. And he's also a very polarizing figure for a lot of reasons. Now I mentioned Avenge 7 fold explicitly for a reason. Firstly, because I was listening to them earlier today at the gym. You could see them on my Spotify. And the second reason being that they actually recently did a tour with Ronnie. They announced they'd be doing a tour with him and they ended up getting a ton of backlash for that. As a result, a ton of controversy was started on Twitter, on TikTok, on, you know, a lot of the metal press. And it kind of became a big controversy in and of itself. And as a result, the singer of Avenged Sevenfold, M. Shadows, has kind of spoken about Ronnie before. I mean, we can see here this interview from Finn McKenty has, you know, Avenged Sevenfold on Ronnie Radke as the first few words. 200,000 views. Why Avenged Sevenfold aren't dropping Ronnie Radke. This is an eight minute clip with 100,000 views. So clearly Ronnie is like a big deal. Here we have Avenged Sevenfold frontman M. Shadow's response to Falling in Reverse controversy. And he basically said he wouldn't be kicking Ronnie off the tour. He thinks he's an entertaining guy. He likes his music. And that's kind of where it comes down to for him, right? If Ronnie really hated those people, he would just say he hates those. But he doesn't. He he's not shy. He would say it. Yeah, and he, he but, he, but he doesn't. And he says, listen, I'm just not going to take a bunch of shit from you guys. Like, yeah. I'm going to fight back. And what did Mike Tyson say? Everyone, everyone talks shit until they get punched in the mouth. A lot of these people, they put him on blast he puts them on blast and they delete what they originally wrote i mean there was someone that he sued them and actually won someone just made something up i, I know that he I, i'm not sure of the outcome but i know that he did sue someone for defamation yeah and you know you gotta understand with the bull if you don't want the horns you yeah. know if you come for ronnie he's gonna come back for you so be ready in addition to the political statements ronnie makes there's a lot of other controversy even apart from his jail thing obviously that's something people are gonna bring up a lot of people claim that he killed someone which is pretty insane because obviously if you kill someone on purpose you don't 
go to jail for two years. Even if you even if you kill someone on accident, you're not going for two years. You're, you're getting manslaughter. You're doing 10 to 20, okay? It's not going to be a little stint in, in jail. Unless you live in Canada, where they may let you off. Shout out, Canadian government. You guys suck. But regardless of that, Ronnie did not kill anyone. But there have been a few accusations from former girlfriends of his. One of these accusations was that he beat them. There was a girl that showed bruises. We can see this is from 2014. It's a, a Loudwire article. And it says, Ronnie Radke, domestic violence charge dropped, releases new song with Deuce. Radke's former girlfriend, Sally Watts, told police that the rocker physically assaulted her back in 2012, and she initially stated this week that Radke had pleaded no contest to domestic violence. However, Radke commented that the domestic charges were dropped. A rep for Radke later told All Press, there is some misinformation out there. Ronnie did have a court appearance today, and the case has been resolved. The domestic violence charge was dismissed. Ronnie pled no contest to a misdemeanor charge of disturbing the peace. So the question is, like, what did he actually do? And I believe that this particular girl, as well as one other girl, have not actually backed off that accusation that Ronnie basically physically them in some way. I think that there was a situation in which Ronnie wouldn't let his girlfriend leave his house. I could be wrong on that one, but we can see here, he was officially charged with a misdemeanor count of corporal injury and misdemeanor false imprisonment by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. He's released on $30,000 bail. So I think that there's no question that Ronnie is a questionable guy, okay? There's no there's no question. He has a strange history. He's had some, some strange relationships. We don't know exactly what the truth is with these situations, but I would speculate that Ronnie is probably kind of a wacky dude to be in a relationship with or be a friend or something like that. And on top of that, he, he's very outspoken politically these days, which ironically is getting him more sh than, you know, the, the actual things that you could probably criticize him for in his personal life, right? But I think the, the problem that a lot of people are having criticizing him is that his music is undeniably pretty good. It's very catchy. He's a, you know, talented artist. And as a result, it's one of these situations where a lot of people have a complicated relationship with this dude's fame. It's like, on one hand, he makes cool art. He puts on great shows. He's a talented dude. On the other hand, what about all this shitty stuff he may or may not have done? But the most recent thing that's going down is he was banned on a few social media sites. And the reason why is that, well, he made a bunch of comments about the trans issue. And obviously the trans issue is going to be a very contentious, touchy subject. Trans and cis are adjectives similar to tall women or short women. Take the adjective away and they're still women. Okay, well, there's also fat women. Let's just keep, let's just use it. Let's use fat women too, right? And also, let me tell you why we don't want to be called cis anything. The term cissexual was co coined by a pedophile, however you say his name, and he performed weird stuff on children and thought it was okay that children were sexualized and all that stuff. So the, the term cis was coined by a straight up pedophile. And if you're okay with still using that after learning that knowledge, then you're in question as well. Now, I'm not, I'm not really sure exactly what the actual situation is behind this. The term cis was coined by a while sympathizer. I have no idea what the real the real story is here. I'm not really familiar with whatever the f is going on. It looks like this guy Tommy Vexed was was tweeting about it though, and he seems to be some kind of member of, of the rock scene. I'm not really sure what the details are behind this, but regardless of what you think about it, he's getting in a bunch of sh from the rock slash metal community. The rock and metal scene is more of a progressive scene ever since Warp Tour. They've been they've been very sort of sympathetic to you know progressive ideology, and when you see like a Paramore concert or something like that, which obviously Paramore is sort of one of those warp Tour scene slash emo bands from the early 2000s. She's, you know, Haley Williams is always saying stuff about progressive issues and how she supports that. And I remember when I saw, when I saw Paramore live at when we were young, she was on stage and she was like, we need to get these old white men out of the industry. So clearly that's the kind of attitude going on. And Ronnie kind of stands in opposition to that because he's, he's clearly someone who doesn't, who doesn't agree with that kind of sentiment. But even beyond that, I mean, he's willing to speak out on trans issues, which obviously is going to get you in a little bit of shit, right? Now, this is the most recent article I've seen about Ronnie, but we see it's titled Falling in Reverse is Ronnie Radke banned from TikTok over gender identity commentary. Falling in Reverse's front man continues to be one of the more outspoken musicians on social media, but some of his recent commentary concerning gender identity has led to a ban on the TikTok social media site. While the singer also claims to have received a shadow ban from Twitter, or X as it is now called. On July 25th, Radke tweeted, imagine getting your TikTok deleted or losing your job or alienated for saying that a trans woman can't have a period. You all have mothers and sisters and wives and girlfriends and know damn well the struggles of being born a woman and the pain of endometriosis, etc., and have the audacity to try and silence or censor the reality. Bullshit. He later returned sharing a tweet that featured a photo of trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney holding a box of Tampax, adding, The same people that call me a womanizer, abuser, and bigot are the same people that support the ideology that trans people can have periods and support tampon companies making trans people the spokesperson. It's extremely offensive to all women to mock their biology. Stop pretending this is okay. And I guess the basic fact that he's expressing here, which is obviously true, is that, you know, people who are male to female cannot have a period. That's not how that works. I know there's some people claiming that there's some kind of like, you know, similar effects to a period, and maybe that is the case. I don't really know 
no, but you're not going to have a, you know, you're not going to actually like bleed like a girl, right? That's not going to happen because, because women, if you've ever lived with a girl, you guys know when it's that time of the month. Okay. She may get a little more pissy at you. Dinner, maybe, dinner, dinner. You know, dinner, more about more of an issue if you're, if you're eating it and you don't enjoy it as much. And that's because they're on a period. There's, there's an emotional effect that happens there. And part of that emotional effect, part of the whole period thing is the fact that they, you know, they bleed out of their pussy. A bunch of blood comes out. And then if you have sex, you end up getting a little red, a little red in the dick there. Later that night, Radke added, I've officially changed my lyrics in I'm not a vampire from I feel like a lady that is pregnant with a baby to I feel like a birthing person that is pregnant with a person who's been birthed. Please like me. <laughs> the following day, Radke returned to Twitter to share some of the pushback on his commentary, noting, these are the people pushing back about common sense, all impressionable kids hiding behind cartoon avatars. If you don't think this is insanely telling about the future, I don't know what will. We have brainwashed kids into thinking that basic biology and common sense need to be argued. The confusion of American kids is the agenda to the powers that be, divide and conquer. A man isn't a man and a woman isn't a woman anymore. Nobody can tell you what a woman is. They're all terrified to get publicly shamed for it. I never went to school in fourth grade and worried about my sexuality. I was excited to go home and play with toys and ride my bike. Will this ever fix itself? Or are we all doomed, like 476 AD Rome? So he's basically saying that we're, we're seeing the fall of Western civilization right now as a result of the, I don't know, the woke gender ideology, whatever you want to call it. Radke, who had adopted Michael Jackson as a screen... What, what is he doing? Why does it say Michael Jackson? <laughs> Didn't Michael Jackson... Isn't there isn't there some HBO documentary about how he, like, was was grooming kids or something? What's the what's the whole story? Why is, why is his name Michael Jackson? This guy is so f***ing whack. When one person suggested that a woman was anyone who identifies as such, the singer shot back, Cool, I identify is a black man. Do I get my reparations now? When the original commenter responded that it was a completely different thing, Radke returned, It's not a completely different thing. You need to respect the fact that I identify as a black man if you want to respect you identify as a woman. You aren't allowed to pick and choose. Additional discussion down this path continued with others as well. So you're saying I can't choose to identify with whatever gender I want, but you're allowed to? That's transphobic. I identify as a good person because of how many people I have helped quietly, financially, emotionally, and spiritually, but y'all say I'm a bad person, so all of you are literally transphobic, bigot pieces of shit for assuming the wrong identity of me, and I will not tolerate it. By July 29th, Radke's ban on TikTok was official, with the singer saying, Ban from TikTok for saying most women don't want to be called sis. Good thing this does not matter to me. Another fan then noted that Radke's tweets had not been showing up in his feed and asked if the Falling in Reverse singer had received a shadow ban from the platform. That led Radke to ask fans to search his name on Twitter and let him know the results. After hearing back from many that they couldn't find his name on Twitter, the singer noted, I am shadow banned. Freedom of speech is dead. America has fallen. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the end is nigh. It's actually over, okay? It's actually pretty much over. Ronnie Radke cannot tweet, the West has fallen. Billions must be educated, okay? Billions, billions must be zombified, actually, to quote one of his songs. Billions, billions must be, billions must be reversed in falling. Billions must fall in reverse, okay? This guy said, dude, really? Did Twitter shadow ban Ronnie Radke? He doesn't show up in any of my searches. Do me a favor and search my name on Twitter. I'm shadow banned. Despite controversial takes on social media, Radke and falling in reverse have been one of the hotter touring acts this summer, with a little break in the action before returning to the road in September. Now, this is just kind of a more recent development, believe it or not. Even a few months ago, Spirit Vox ended up dropping off of a Falling in Reverse tour after their fans basically got angry at them because of his, I think, comments about trans people. These recent comments have been the more inflammatory ones he's made, but this is from back in March. Here we have Spirit Vox last week confirmed they had withdrawn from their six scheduled dates on the popular Monster Tour. They didn't make a comment beyond this. As far as I know, they just said they were pulling out and then our last night replaced them. And then Radke basically said, I could never talk trash about Spirit Vox, Courtney LaPlante, and the rest of them are so sweet. I feel sorry for them because some of their fans are awful. And I'm sure people assume you're going to talk trash about them for dropping off tour. It ruins things for certain people because they wanted drama so bad. Since the announcement of the tour, Radke was subject to further controversy after being accused of assault. After Loudwire reported on the comments, Radke made a TikTok about cancel culture. A woman retweeted their post on Twitter and asked, should we hold him accountable for throwing me against a van and choking me eight years ago? Or is that too long ago? Please advise. So I guess there's like another assault accusation about Ronnie. As far as I know, that one's probably unsubstantiated. Radke screenshotted the woman's comment and fiercely denied the allegations, writing, at Bree Monster, you are eight foot seven looking in that pic, saying I threw your ass against a van, you fucking lying ass bitch. I do not play with the false shit. I'll take every fucking last cent from you. You cannot stand that I'm doing good. Why do you need this kind of attention? Last year, Radke made comments on TikTok that were perceived as transphobic, saying, show me one person over the age of 19 that calls themselves they, them, and adding, billions of people do not call themselves they, them. It's gone too far. Billions must fall in reverse, ladies and gentlemen. They must, okay? They must be educated. They must fall, and it must be in reverse. They cannot fall forward. Back in 2015, Radke was accused of 
by a 25 year old woman, but he denied the allegations and subsequently sued the accuser for defamation. He was also arrested for domestic abuse against his then girlfriend Sally Watts in 2012, but the charge was dismissed. So as far as all these allegations, I think that you have to take them on a case by case basis. It is true that one of the charges was dismissed. The domestic abuse charge was in fact dismissed, but he did end up pleading no contest to a different lesser charge basically. Now, as far as Radke's character, I'm not going to go on a limb and defend him because he's, he's clearly had some kind of, you know, sketchy, somewhat strange past. He's kind of an effed up dude in that way. But, you know, right now, as far as uh, people trying to tour with him, I, I do think it's kind of for fans to harass a band like Spirit Box who's trying to tour with Radke. Because, you know, if you look at Spirit Box's monthly listeners on Spotify, I mean, I just checked right now, they're getting one and a half million monthly listeners, which is, you know, not bad. But Ronnie is getting seven and a half. So he's literally like five to six times as big as them. And obviously Spirit Box, which I think probably makes, you know, a little bit better music than Ronnie in my mind, them going on tour with Ronnie would benefit them. It would benefit their music, it would benefit their fans, and it would make the band money, right? But then when they get this opportunity, basically people, you know, call out the band and then they feel kind of forced via public pressure to, to walk away from them, right? And this is the same thing that happened with Avenged Sevenfold. You know, by contrast, they decided they weren't gonna not tour with Ronnie. They like him, they're gonna tour with him regardless of what people think. And as far as the situation itself with Ronnie, I think that one thing people have to take in mind is there's kind of two paths he could take here. One, which is the path he seems to never be willing to take is to just shut the f up and go and make his music right and not cause controversy but that seems to never be what ronnie wants to do he's he's a firecracker he's someone who speaks out you know when he when he feels he disagrees with something and i think the kind of reason he is so famous in a way is because he's a controversial figure right he's not afraid to speak his mind i've personally been to one of his shows and at his show he talks about people sh talking him on twitter he's like the haters, I don't care. There was a specific part at one of his shows that I went to where he was like, hey guys, how many of you have talked me on Twitter? And a bunch of people rose their hands and he was like, thanks for the money, you idiots. You know, he's kind of spitting in the face of people who hate him. Even one of his more recent songs, Zombify, this is a certified radio hit. I think on Spotify, this song has, actually I can check right now. On Spotify, this song is 76 million plays. So it's like a very popular song, undoubtedly. If you turn on rock radio right now, like Sirius XM, Octane, I think is the station that would play this kind of stuff. It's, it's all over Octane, right? It's a super popular song and if you actually like look at the lyrics they're about cancel culture zombified by the lies they've said we've become the walking dead because everybody's talking bitch. oh no they'll never let go of something you said 10 years ago and th this line they're canceling you right they're canceling canceling you that's literally a line and like obviously that is kind of cringy like the lyric itself is cringy and if you hear it in the song it is like <laughs> it is a little a little cringe to hear out loud but it's like a catchy fun song when he performs it live it's also pretty good and so i see why it's a hit because it's, it's genuine like a well done song and this is also like always been how ronnie's been some of you may not know this but if you go to you know falling in reverse on youtube one of his most popular songs from i think first or second album he did is good girls like bad guys and that's obviously a meme song that was on tiktok i mean a few years ago this song was all over tiktok and i didn't even know who made it i didn't know where it came from at the time when i was like in high school and this was a thing you know four or five years ago but this was like an entire trend And this is like, like there's like thousands and thousands of these on, on TikTok. And another thing that blew up on TikTok and like Instagram reels and stuff like that is another one of his songs. And this song is more from like kind of my area of the internet because it was kind of used as like a, a chuddy soy meme, so to speak. But this guy blew up from doing this, this little TikTok, this little short. My life is like a video game, trying hard to beat the stage. And this is like, this is like a, a, a regular thing with Ronnie. Like he will make a song that's very catchy. And then the lyrics will also be a little bit cringe. And on one hand, it's like, well, it is cringe. So that's bad. But on the other hand, you know, the other, the other aspect of it is like, well, at least he's kind of wearing his heart on his sleeve. He's not hiding who he is. You know, he's a little bit cringe. He's got a little bit of that in him. You know, he, he's kind of self-aware of it. Sometimes he's made fun of himself a little bit, but even like, he, I think he got mad at Anthony Fantano because Anthony basically said, said that his most recent song or I guess second most recent song Washing the World Burn was like the worst song of the year. It would be one of the worst songs of the year. Someone suggested this new Falling in Reverse track. Let's hear if it's good. I got voices in my head again 
tread carefully. Women the demon oh, yeah. so the charm for fixing their pithy apart. I'm swimming with sharks. Like I shot up a track. With, with the sharks. Listen to the war. Go to the end of the stars. Go far. Driving in my car. I mean, obviously, Anthony's like a music aficionado. I mean, his job is to be like a music critic. So when he hears something he thinks is bad, he's going to go off on it. He's going to, you know, call it cringe or whatever. And especially someone who's like really into rap. You know, he's like, he's more into like the Kendricks, okay? The Earl sweatshirts. He's a Death Grips fan, which isn't really rap. But you get what I'm saying. He's like, he's like, you know, a little bit pretentious. He's got that like mu music taste, you know, that board of 4chan, the music board. And so, I, you know, obviously he's going to find it somewhat cringe and like <laughs> admittedly that song like it does sound a little bit like epic rap battles of history as this comment says this guy says it's true the faster you rap the cooler you sound i like how the discomfort and uncertainty slowly creep onto his face during the first listen i find it so funny he says nowadays everybody's so sensitive as if he doesn't complain about every bad review we'll do it do it. Post it. Post it around. Put up the post. Let's see the post. I want to see the post. Pull those skeletons out of the closet. Yeah, Drake, Drake is shaking. And so he made fun of him. And then as a result, you see this video from Heavy. Ronnie Radke destroys music critic Anthony Fantano. Is the and so, uh, you know, obviously from this title, there's like a subsect of the rock world that wants to see Radke basically, you know, talk his critics and fight back. He kind of appeals to like the anti-cancel culture crowd in a way. And Anthony Fantano is someone who's more like left wing and kind of, you know, and whatever you think of Anthony, he's, he's a little bit pretentious. Obviously, Radke's going to be like sympathetic to these kinds of people, and they're going to be sympathetic to him. Radke responded with a tweet mentioning the needle drop, calling him, quote, the Perez Hilton of music critics, who looks 25 years older than he is, and saying that nobody will care about him in three years. In response, Fantano released two sets of side-by-side -side images of himself and Radke, tweeting, over the past decade, I objectively look like I've put on fewer years in Mr. Radke, and I've had fewer trips through the legal system as well. I think think I'm winning. Radke would reply by saying, the funny thing about the right pick as opposed to the blonde pick is the blonde pick is five years later than the right pick of me. You were born looking old. In a heated exchange, Radke claimed that the Needle Drop's social media audience consists mostly of paid bots from India. The Falling in Reverse frontman added, We all know what happens to mostly negative YouTubers. Another YouTuber will make a video called What Happened to Anthony Fantano in Two Years? Tops. This is far from the only... And so, I mean, you know, as this video ends, we can see, you know, basically that guy talking about the fact that this is far from the first controversy for Ronnie, and it's definitely far from the last. It seems like every month we're hearing about him in the news cycle. You know, he's right up there on, on Loud Wire and metal injection is like the top five people to talk about in rock because he's actually willing to give his opinion versus a lot of bands these days are kind of just wanting to stay impartial, right? Here we have a Finn McKenty video, the Ronnie Radke versus Anthony Fantano beef. In this article in particular from Metal Injection that I found, Ronnie Radke says freedom of speech is dead after getting banned on social media for being an edgelord. It kind of represents one side of the culture war. I guess Radke spoke to every single woman on the planet and has determined that 100% of them are on his side. That or maybe this is all overblown and falls right into line with Radke's firebrand mentality of getting attention through being endlessly controversial at all costs. And of course, it had to be Mulvaney, the target of every opinion like this at the moment. Oh, and don't worry, Radke really leaned into the whole single-digit IQ racism thing, retweeting another user saying, it's not a completely different thing, you need to respect the fact that I identify as a black man. So obviously, whoever wrote this article is more of a left-leaning individual, or, you know, at least, at the very least, pro-progressive, pro-trans, right? Versus Ronnie, kind of has the opposite opinion. And I will disagree with this article just on the fact that they say that Ronnie, like, you know, wants attention at any, at any cost possible because I think it's clear that through his music alone he's capable of getting attention but the kind of complicated thing about that is he also can't keep his fucking mouth shut I honestly don't think that saying stuff like this has benefited his career that much it, 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 it it's really only harmed it because it turns a lot of people off to him but at the same time a lot of people that are turned off to you know his music are also the same kinds of people that are turned off to his political takes so maybe he's not losing that much in the end regardless of that I would speculate that Ronnie's going to continue being a controversial figure in the near future he's obviously a talented musician you know and he's got like big label support behind him. I mean, if you look at his music videos, right? This is his most recent one. I mean, this is like a, a PlayStation game, like Marvel, like Marvel movie. Like what, <laughs> what is this? He's like, he's like in a plane in like this suit. He's like Iron Man. He, he jumps out. Like this is like a, a million dollar music video. And this is like every video he does. If you go to the Epitaph Records channel, you go to their most popular videos tab. A lot of them are Ronnie stuff, you know, falling in a verse, popular monster. This is three years ago. I think this is his biggest hit ever, basically, at least as of now, but it's like a high budget music video. And this is 
just like one example. There's a ton of stuff he's done. If you look at situations, obviously this is an, an old song. This is Escape the Fate. But here's the Voices in My Head music video. I mean, this one, like it looks like Suicide Squad. It looks like this is like a like a $3 million music video alone. This is like, I mean, it literally looks like a Suicide Squad. Like every scene is like crazy. Got all these effects and stuff. It's got just a lot going on. And you know, clearly the label believes in him. Clearly the music industry believes in him. But it seems like the, the people, at least some sort of subset of them are very mad. And uh, we'll probably continue to be mad at him for a long time. And I think that, you know, there, there are some very justified reasons to be mad at Ronnie. Undoubtedly, you know, some of the some of the situations with his prior relationships and stuff like that are not good. He seems like he, he was kind of a crazy dude for a while. I don't want to put to bed any of his any of his potential victims or whatever. I don't want to be like, no, oh, you can't talk about that. But at the same time, I feel like kind of the more concerning thing to me is that a lot of the people who are like angry at him are more angry about the stuff he says on TikTok and Twitter than like the, you know, criminal cases he's been involved in. But ultimately, that's kind of where I'm going to have to leave this situation because ultimately Ronnie will continue being famous. Ultimately, people will continue being mad at him, mostly for stuff he says on Twitter. And that's kind of where it's going to go forever, I think. And if you liked this video, consider becoming a member. For $5 a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts, unreleased videos, and the members-only Minecraft server. Thanks so much to all of my YouTube members who fund my content.